I've had so many great days wandering through the bush, uh, living with the Maasai, going out on some amazing safaris, seeing things that I could, in my wildest imagination, possibly never ever see. But it all came into life here. It all came into fact here. It's memories I'm gonna always have. So thank you. I'm ready for my four wives. That was awesome. We'll cut that piece out for your girlfriend. Just cut that. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're not Great. still filming us. I am. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm Louise Kosher at Cotter's Camp and we're really, really excited to start a monthly podcast. Uh, I'm here with our first podcast guest, Donnie Dust. Donnie has had TV shows, podcasts, books and has 15 million followers over many social media platforms. This is your first time in Kenya, your first time on safari. Tell us about it. First, uh, let's do a cheers. Cheers, Cheers, Welcome. indeed, to Kenya, the safari, Cotters. Thank you so much for having me. Mm. Good beer out here in Kenya, that's for sure. But. This is my, my first trip to Kenya, my first trip really to Africa. And um, I can only really say it's been an absolute amazing time. I mean, I think in my mind as a young kid kind of growing up and just even in my young adults, I always had that desire to go to Africa. And it's been one of those uh, kind of those mysterious lands. And you know, you hear about it in newspapers, you read about it in books, you hear about safaris and all these wild tales. And uh, you know, when you reached out and said, hey, let's, let's get you out here, let's do some things, let's have a good time, it kind of fulfilled this dream. So my hat goes off to you, and I praise you very much so for, uh, for bringing me out here. It's been an absolutely amazing time. And I think for me being able to see the animals, see the people, see the culture, more importantly, see what Cotters is doing to maintain that and, and safeguard it is, Something I'm just looking forward to, you know, sharing with the rest of the folks when I get back home. It's, it's, uh, it kind of goes unsaid. You know, there's a lot of people here, specifically at Cotters, that are doing amazing things, and I just hope I can help reach a larger audience because it's absolutely amazing. I mean, I've had so many great days wandering through the bush, uh, living with the Maasai, going out on some amazing safaris, seeing things that I could, in my wildest imagination, possibly never ever see. But it all came into life here. It all came into fact here. It's memories I'm gonna always have. So thank you very much. Well, thank you for joining us. We're, we're just incredibly grateful. My pleasure. Was there a moment in your stay at, um, with us where there was a person or a particular event that, that is going to be unforgettable? Yeah, I think. I mean, God, it's a hard one because there's so many events and moments and people that I have come across here that I would never, you know, in a million years thought I would have been able to experience. But I mean, there's individuals like Moses. Mm. Um, I mean, everyone loves Moses, Kenyeka, and just my opportunities to learn from him. And I think, you know, you know, when we had our first conversations, I kind of expressed, I want to come here and learn. And you were like, Moses is the guy to learn from. And I'm continuously, even like I leave tomorrow, today is kind of my last day, but I'm still learning from Moses. We, we shaped some more bows and fire hardened some bows. Um, he's just an absolutely amazing, amazing human being. And, you know, I think the very first day I woke up here, I walked from one of these amazing tents, I walked the grounds, the guards are sitting here, and I saw zebra just mm -hmm. right out here in this little landscape. And I had to take a moment and think like, where the hell am I? This is unreal. There's zebra right here. There's Impala running through. It just seems something out of a movie. And I think for me, that was like, uh, it was kind of like a groundbreaking moment where all of a sudden I'm like, whew, hits you in the heart, hits you in the head. And you're like, all right, from this moment on, you have to savor everything, everything, every, every relation, Gladys in the mess tent to, you know, the entire crew that's washing clothes. Like everyone serves a role here. It is one symbiotic relationship here at Cotter's. And it's absolutely amazing. Now, when you were 37, you had a heart attack. It was uh, very severe. And you took the drastic and unusual step of going to live in the cave in winter mm -hmm. to recover. Um, you write a, lo a lot in your books 
uh, on, on living in nature and mental well-being and health. Could you explain that a bit? More? Absolutely, yeah. So at 37, I did have a uh, massive heart attack. I was a widow maker. So 99.9% .9 of the people that have it typically die. And I was relatively young, so it was kind of a, you know, the doctor said it was a thickness of the blood, if you will. Um, but after I had it, I kind of had like an awakening. And um, my goal, my focus was to head into the bush and just kind of live in that all natural, that kind of primal state. And I knew that primal state would really help align my mental, physical, and emotional well-being. It's not the typical course of action for someone when they are in a recovery from a, <laughs> a cardiac related you know event but it was it uh, it felt it felt right it felt like it was something I needed to do and I think for me the natural environment the natural landscape the, the flora the fauna it is the ultimate healing force and from that time I've had opportunities to travel all around the world and uh, every environment provides something new so even though at 37 having a heart attack I'm 44 now but I can take things away from from Africa. I can take things away from the Maasai Mara and say, this is healing, this is well-being, and it's allowing me to really move forward. And what would you say are the, the biggest risks and rewards of living in nature? Because here we, we do live in nature. It's not as hardcore as what you do by any <laughs> sense of the imagination, but we're also living with, with nature. So what would you say are the risks and the rewards? Yeah, I think right off the bat, I think the rewards are kind of a symbiotic relationship, kind of knowing the animals that exist here, who they are, why they are, the patterns they move into, the kind of the greenery in front of us, and you get a deeper appreciation for them. You see their value, you see their presence, and it's like that is a living, breathing thing, and it exists in this environment flawlessly, right? Because nature won't lie, cheat, or steal from them, and these animals have found a way to exist in that. And that's kind of the dangerous side for us because most folks approach the wild, they approach the bush as a battle. And one of the things I've learned is through, you know, living with the Maasai and going on bushwalks, it is that symbiotic relationship. The cotters is part of that symbiotic relationship here. It is existing because of this and the natural environment is also existing with cotters. So it's, it's kind of a beautiful relationship, both dangerous but both beneficial, but it's absolutely kind of amazing to witness it. Mm. I know that when I fly back into a city, I immediately get stressed. And how how does that work for you? Oh man, I'll tell you. <laughs> Going back to the normal world civilization, it definitely gives me a little uh, a little stress. But I know that the reasons I'm there are for my sons and my loved mm. ones. So you know, as a man, as a father, I have, I find that balance. I can go out on many adventures, but being a father is probably the biggest adventure. And I'll never pass that up. I'll never give that up. And that's ultimately number one for me. So, yes, when I land back in Colorado, I'm like, yes, I'm back in Colorado. There's beautiful snow. And all I want to do is run into the mountains. But I really just want to run and go get my boys. Yeah. Home is where the heart is, which Bingo. is both nature and your boys by the sounds of things. Absolutely. So millions of Americans go into the wilderness, they go to national parks every year. Do you think that the Mara would see some of them? And if so, why? Coming to Africa, coming to the Maasai Mara? Yeah, I think for many Americans, Europeans, Canadians, people from all around the world, this is an environment you can truly connect with on like yeah. an emotional level. You can you can see the animals you've read about in books and you've heard about in school or you you know, unfortunately kind of see in zoos at times, but you get to live that experience. And I think if I could convey one message to them is, you know, take that chance. Don't don't fear the unknown, because fear is just a projection. It's something we haven't experienced. It's all in the brain. But come to Africa, come to Kenya, come to the Maasai Mara, come to Cotters, and experience all that is here because it's 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 astounding. I mean the I mean the view, I wish the cameras could turn, we could yeah. see, they could see that view, but it is something that uh, more people need to experience, and I will be an advocate for it moving forward. Like, you guys have to get there. More importantly, it's it's something that uh, could be lost in time. Yeah. You know, and thanks to efforts like, you know, what Cotters puts forth, um, it is about saving, preserving, and making sure that the world really has the opportunity to see it. So, there are some 
that have negative perceptions of Africa and Africans. What would you say to them after spending three weeks uh, in Africa with, with some lovely, amazing African people? <laughs> Absolutely. I think the perceptions of a few can really distort a large number, but um, I have not experienced a moment here where I wasn't wanted or uncomfortable or given a smile and I'm a big hugger. I gave everybody hugs and I received hugs. It was just, it was, it was like almost in a way of like coming home. There was, there was a comfort there. There was a familiarity there and there's nothing to fear. There's nothing, there's nothing. I mean, there's the occasional line, but I was okay with <laughs> I mean, that's part of the experience. And, but there's nothing here that would make me say, don't come to Africa. People need to come here. This is where life began. This is mm. where, you know, truly the origins of our very being started and they got to come and experience it. I mean, any, any Westerner, like, stop going to Vegas, stop going to Cancun, go somewhere that's meaningful. Go somewhere where you can truly connect, meet amazing people, learn about their culture, their family, what it means to see a certain plant and how it has impacted them for hundreds if not thousands of years. It's beautiful. That's the stuff that's written in books. Well, you can keep reading books or you can just come here and see it yourself. Uh, now you're talking about being a hugger and we've all experienced that here and it's fantastic and it, it sort of reflects who you are. In your social media, you do no brand placements. There's nothing commercial about it. You present what your passions are, whether it's making primitive tools or living in wilderness or survival techniques. And you spend a, a lot of time engaging with your audience in a really, really kind way. What is that about? I think it's about love. I think it's about uh, appreciation. I mean, I think we should be engaging with people on a constant basis. Uh, in this day and age, everyone is so isolated or secluded in certain ways. And that's kind of the complete polar opposite for me. I, I want to talk with people. I want to, you know, answer their questions or hear their stories. And I know it might be a lot for some folks on social media, but you know, I make I make it a point after I post something to be there. Yeah. Uh, why would I not want to be there? Like someone's showing up to watch something or to provide me some feedback. I want to be engaged with them because it knows that, that I care and I appreciate them showing up. And you know, when it comes to brands and things, it's it's not that I don't have relationships with brands. It's that the brands that I do have relationships is mm. I ask for nothing in return. I'm happy to promote something that is good, mm. something that is beneficial. I ask for no dollars in return. Mm. Like come to Cotter's, yeah. like it's absolutely awesome. Yeah. Like if there's a solar panel that I use, I use it because it's good, not because I'm getting, you know, some money on the back end. That's how I choose to promote companies and promote brands through an authentic experience. I'm like. Mm. For here, I've had that authentic experience. I mean, we talked on the phone. Yeah. I kind of said, this is what I'm looking to do. This is what I want to experience. You said, check, not a problem, check, not a problem. And we did that. So for me, like, you provided it. <laughs> you absolutely provided phenomenal across the board. Um, you, you take paying groups or individuals into the wilderness to learn not only how to survive, but in all likelihood to learn about themselves as well and where their limits they think they're where they're at versus where they really are and it, it's really supposedly quite an enlightening uh, enriching experience would you consider doing the same and bringing people to Africa because I know you've done it in, in other continents as well absolutely yes uh, I'm looking down the pipe I will bring people to Africa <laughs> <laughs> no I, absolutely I, I think um, based on my experiences here and what people could learn, what people could experience from the land, from the people, it's something that's it's, it's life-changing. I mean, I'm going home with a whole, a whole new bunch of skills, a whole new bunch of friends that... I forgot to tell you about this bit, actually. So I just wanted to first thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's no circumcision. You're, you're okay. fine. <laughs> I wanted to thank you because you've been such an amazing, kind, generous person, but I can't say it alone. Uh, so the community wanted to come over and say a big thank you 
to you oh, as well. Oh man, this is amazing. It's, and, it's gonna make me cry. <laughs> and just, I wanted to quickly ask because I, you've got a new podcast called Rescue. I do. It sounds really exciting. Where do people find it? Yes, you can look, uh, listen to Rescue anywhere you listen to your podcast. Apple, anywhere you can find it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. There we Yeah, yeah, yeah.